everybody. Our next guest has lived an incredible life as a naval officer with the Canadian Armed Forces, the first Canadian to go to space, and a federal politician. Well, in his new book, A Most Extraordinary Ride, he chronicles his rise from a mischievous teenager and naval <laughs> midshipman to a decorated astronaut and statesman who represented Canada on the world stage from Earth and beyond. Here to tell us more is the author himself, the one and only Mark Garneau. Welcome to the <laughs> we are very thrilled. And let's kind of start, let's start with astronaut. Um, because we have a lot of options of where to start. But your journey to becoming an astronaut was kind of unusual. Can you tell us about how it started? Well, I saw an ad in the paper and I thought, wow. Uh, no way! Absolutely. Canada was looking for astronauts. And so they put an ad in all the papers in the country. I saw it. I said, if I don't apply for this, I'll kick myself the rest of my life. I'll never know. I applied, and six months later, I was chosen. Oh, oh my, my gosh! gosh! That is such a great story. I have so oh many follow-ups, but... <laughs> this is why newspapers need to live. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, uh, let's go back to October the 4th, 1984, mm -hmm. because that was when you were launched into orbit on the Space Shuttle Challenger. It was for an eight-day mission. So what was an average day in space like? Well, in a way, like on Earth, we, they let us sleep for eight hours at night. We ate three meals a day, and in between, we worked. Uh, but of course, everything else was extraordinary. First of all, we were in space, so we could look out the window wow. and see the Earth, which oh, is totally gosh. mesmerizing. And secondly, you're floating all the time. Yeah. And that, you know, I, when I was a kid, I had imagination. We all did. Yeah. And, and being able to float kind of brings back your, your, the child in you. Aww. And uh, it was just lovely to be able to float all the time. That's I'm going to ask a difficult question. What was your favorite food in space? <laughs> uh, my favorite question. Uh, shrimp cocktail, believe it or not, yes. <laughs> Now, before you think that we had, you know, really fancy food up there, shrimp cocktail was special because it had that, you know, that horseradish sauce yeah. yes. that opens up your nose. Yes. And we all ate it every day because you get stuffed up when you're up oh. in space because a lot of fluid goes up into your head. Your face gets bigger. Uh, so having that horseradish sauce uh, cleared your nasal passages wow. very well. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, you know, what we appreciate so much in your book is that you talk about the lighthearted stuff, but you also get very, very personal um, in your book. And so um, you also share in your book that your first wife died by suicide. And how did that then shape you mm -hmm. going forward? Yes, it was a, a, a very difficult time in my life. Uh, it, it was in 1987. My wife was diagnosed as bipolar. And, and remember back in those days, that was 37 years mm -hmm. ago, we didn't, we didn't talk much about mental health. There weren't many support groups other than my parents and my brothers. And uh, it was a very tough time for me. We had two 11-year-old twins. And uh, it... Uh, I think it shaped me in, in the sense of becoming very conscious, as many Canadians are now, about the importance of taking mental health out of the closet and being more open about it and, and creating more support. Because I think we all know somebody mm -hmm. who uh, is going through a difficult time. And back then, it wasn't so easy. Mm. Unbelievable. Yeah. So uh, we talked about your very first mission to space, but then you were sent on two more missions mm -hmm. and your final as a mission specialist aboard the International Space Station. Now we want to talk about the ISS because in 2030, it is going to be crashed into the ocean. It's done in 2030. And it so far, perhaps just to some of us, it feels like it's the last bastion of international cooperation. Many different mm -hmm. countries are working up there on the ISS. Mm -hmm. What do you think this means for the future of space. Right, you're right. It has been a beautiful example of international cooperation. It's included even Russia. So it, it is really quite remarkable. I'm not sure what's going to happen after that, but I certainly hope that all the countries that are in space, we continue to work together. We want to make space a frontier that is common to all and that is peacefully developed, and particularly when we go to the moon. So hopefully we will all get together on some other future projects and work together. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's important for Canada to invest in 
in space in the space sector? Absolutely. Uh, Canada has been investing in space for now over 60 years, and space has made our lives better. Mm -hmm. You know, when you, when when I pull out my cell phone and show it to people and say, "How do you think <laughs> it's possible for you to talk to anybody on the planet, or to know exactly where you are on the planet?" That's because of all those invisible satellites that are up there that mm -hmm. are making our life much more convenient today. So mm -hmm. space is important, particularly now when we want to look down and see how the planet is changing. Yeah. So, so uh, I think space will continue to be important, and I hope that Canada will continue to invest in it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we know who is investing in space, and it's a lot of tech billionaires right now. Mm -hmm. And one of the top ones that comes to mind is Elon Musk. And we know that he recently pulled off the first private spacewalk. It was a four-person crew of civilians. So what are your thoughts on this increasing privatization of space, space travel, these kinds of adventures? I think it's a good thing, uh, because in the early days, only governments spent money on space. The private sector didn't want to get involved. It was too expensive, too risky, too complex. But today, some people are ready to invest in it, and I think it advances technology for the benefit of all of us. So I think it's a good thing, and I hope it continues. Mm. Okay. So from space to politics now, <laughs> because you resigned as the president of the Canadian Space Agency to run for the Liberal Party in the 2006 federal election, and ultimately, ultimately you were elected as a member in 2008. So why was politics your next move? Well, uh, because when I was president of the Canadian Space Agency, I reported to a minister, and I came to the conclusion that even though I could recommend to the government what to do. It was the politicians that made oh. the decisions, mm -hmm. for better or for worse. Yeah. And I thought I would like to be there so I could be one of the people making those decisions. So that's what attracted me to it. Oh, that's a guess. Noble cause. Noble cause. Yeah. You actually write in your book, uh, you say Canada's standing in the world has slipped. What do you mean? Well, Canada has traditionally had a good reputation, and it still does. Everybody would like to live in Canada, uh, coming from other countries, I think, generally speaking. But our reputation has slipped in the sense that I don't think we're doing as much as we could to help with collective security. I think we've allowed our our armed forces to, to become too small, mm -hmm. so we can't contribute as much as we used to. Mm -hmm. And the other area where I think we need to be uh, pay more attention is that Although we know Europe and the United States extremely well, we've been dealing with them forever, the center of the world, or the, if you like, the, the center of gravity of the world mm -hmm. has moved to the Indo-Pacific. And we've got a lot of work to become more familiar with those countries mm -hmm. because they are assuming increasing importance. So I, need, I think we need to put more emphasis on those countries. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you so much for writing this book, for sharing your adventures with us. We really, really appreciate it. What an honor to have you here. Thank you really very much. My pleasure. Um, hey, you, come a bit closer. We've got so many more must-see interviews, spicy debates, lifestyle tips, and pop culture moments. So subscribe to our channel by tapping the logo below, and don't miss out.